this tutorial is focused on using text to point as a way to morph one letter to another. So what I mean by that is this example right here. So, so if I play the sketch, you would see a W and if I click on the sketch, it would gradually morph into the letter M. Um, so if you watch my previous video on the basics of text to points, you would have learned how to change the number of vertices inside a letter. And also you would learn how to use begin shape and end shape to connect all the different vertices around the letter into an outline. Um, so we're going to continue on that route and, and figure out how we can, how we can create this morphing effect. Um, first of all, I have created a basic starter sketch here that I'm going to share in the about section. Um, so, so what I have over here is a, a basic startup with my font, my OTF font loaded. Um, I have drawn the font out just using the text function and we're going to carry on from here. So, so the next thing I want to do is turning my first letter W into points on the screen using text to points. Um, so I'm going to do that inside setup and up here, I'm going to create an empty array variable. I'm going to call it let first letter. And inside setup, I'm going to say, first letter equals grotesque dot text to points and w and i'm gonna give it an x and y position and also font size which is a variable i've already declared and I'm going to give it a simple factor, which defines the resolution of the, the vertices around the text. So I believe I got the same text right here. I'm going to tidy code here. And now I have to define my X and Y variable, which I haven't done yet. Um, so let's come up here and say let X and Y and inside setup, I'm just going to copy and paste the, the X and Y value that I have here for my text and put it in here. So X would equal to width divided by 2 minus 80 and Y would equal to height divided by 2 plus 65. I want to make sure I have my semicolon all in place. And return to the text, I'm just going to replace this with my X and Y variable. Perfect. So if I play this, I'm, I, haven't, you know, I haven't drawn the text out yet, so that's the next thing I'm going to do. And I'm going to do that using a for loop. So if I go into draw and I'm going to say for let i equals zero, i smaller than first letter dot length, um, i plus plus. And inside, I would say vertex, oh, vertex, first letter i dot x, and first letter i dot y. Okay, if any of this part doesn't make any sense to you, return to the first video and, and review this topic again. Um, so I have this this uh, basically a for loop that like draw all the vertex vertices out using taking from like the, the X and Y array from my first letter text to point array. Um, before this, I'm going to write begin shape and end shape. And I should really take this text off and just see the outline of my text. Yay. So, so there it is. This is my my text to point text. Um, now the next thing, the next logical thing to do is probably drawing out the next text, next alphabet. So my alphabet two is M. 
So pretty much you just have to replicate this whole process um, and create another letter. So I'm gonna do this real quick here. Let second letter equals empty array. And I'm just gonna copy this, paste this, here and put an M here and down here I'm just going to copy and paste this and and over here I'll probably change this to ooh, second letter length okay just like that I can delete this line now all right, so now we have two different shapes drawn out. Um, one is a W, one is an M, each inside its own for loop and inside of its own begin shape and end shape. So, so here's, here's what we need to do next. We have to match the number of ver vertices inside W with the number of vertices inside of M so that every single vertices inside of W have a position to move towards when, when it's trying to transform into M. So if I go into my setup and do an F print, let's, let's just take a look at how many vertices are in there right now. Um, so if I do first letter dot length and second letter dot length and let's play and we'll see, oh, okay, so they, they're not too far off. Um, the first letter has 98 vertices and the second letter has 104 vertices. Um, we have to make these two sets of vertices match number wise. It has to be exactly the same um, for the purpose of the tutorial. So, so what we have to do is doing some like very finite tweaking of the simple factor. Um, so I'm gonna do 0 0.09 here and let's play and see Okay, so it actually got a little too low, right? I have to bring it back to 98. So what if I do that? Ooh, a little too far. Great. <laughs> so that, that actually, the sound actually wasn't too bad. Um, so, so you're just tweaking the little decimal number until the simple factor match. And this is probably the most meticulous part of this whole coding tutorial. Um, and, and it's really not that bad. So. So now that the first letter length array is the same length as the second letter array. Great. Um, in that case, we can maybe combine this begin shape together so that they can, they can draw two of the letters at the same time. So here I'm going to copy this line over here, delete this part, and I'm gonna draw it over here. Ooh. So, so what I have here right now is that it's, it's attempting to combine like the first letter and the second letter together in this like really wild way and totally unreadable. What do we have to do to, to bring every single, single vertex inside first, the first letter into the position of the second letter? So, so what can help us here is actually if statements. So I'm gonna comment this, the second letter out and just keep the first one here. And um, I'm going to create like a set of different, for different if statements so that, so to, like, to like make sure that no matter like which position the first letter X and Y is in relation to the second letter X and Y, it's going to move towards, you know, the, the second position. So, so I'm gonna do if first, letter x if it's smaller or equal to the second letter x right if the first letter x is smaller than the second letter x then the first letter x should be plus plus, it should go towards it. So we can try to play this out. Let's play it and we can see, oh cool, a set of X's that are smaller than the second letter X's 
have moved towards it. Um, and that's obviously not enough. We have to move the rest of the letter towards the second letter. So, so I'm basically just going to do the flip side of this statement. So I'm going to say if first letter x is bigger than second letter x, then it should go minus minus. Right, almost there. And now we have to do the y part. So I'm going to copy this statement again and say, I'm going to tidy my sketch here so it looks a little nicer. Um, if first letter y is bigger than y, then it would, it would go towards it and mirror this again the other way around. Great, so this is, this is how you do it. Um, this is how you create a text to morph effect. After creating this basic version, you can try all different kind of variations of this, right? So, so we have this like basic like outline morphing version. We don't necessarily have to do that. We can, let's comment this out. We can also do draw a set of ellipses around the letters and have the ellipses move from one position to the next. So for instance, we can copy and paste this and say, let's say 10, 10, and let's take off begin shape and end shape, which works specifically with the, the vertex inside. Um, so if we, for instance, if we do an ellipse, this is, this is kind of like, almost like a pearl necklace kind of effect that we get, right? Um, we could also do something such as, like combining this with translate. So if I do translate, and if I copy and paste um, our, our first letter X, Y positions into it, and, and if I do line here, right? If I do, let's say zero, now if I say minus 10, minus 10, 10, 10, and let's play, we have to remember to add our push and pop. So if we do it like, like that, then we'll see a set of outlines that, that morph from one position to the other. So that's it for text to point and morph. Um, I was really inspired by a couple of different videos I watch on YouTube for making my own version of the tutorials and I'm, I'm going to link them right here on the screen. And the next tutorial is going to be on combining text to points with classes and objects and JavaScript splice. And in that way, we can start thinking about how to add, remove, and swap different parts of the array of objects that surround the text.